that's when I finally, after three or four months, finally went cold turkey. But I really spent a long time getting there. Um, and then I trained for quite a while before I finally ran a marathon. So, but you can, you can do it. But just take your time. The beauty of the minimal shoes, I have to say, because Chris McDougall tells the story. He went barefoot his first summer in the fall. In the wintertime, he figured, I'm going to put my shoes back on. I've got this. I know how to do this. He put his shoes back on. And within a couple of runs, he was back to landing on his heel. It's very hard to not land on your heel when, you, when you're in those shoes because you, you lose that sensory input. So this is why I really love the fact that these little shoes have really started to um, proliferate. And you have options now for the winter time. But there are also, I just want to add, there are people who do wear standard running shoes, do land on their heel, and they're not getting injured. Yes. And if you're one of those folks, they broke, you don't have to fix yeah. it. You know, you're probably running well already. So, you know, your impact peaks and your load rates are probably low, would be my guess. So, so this is, you know, if, if you're not injured, don't worry about it. Um, um, that is if you've been running for a long time, but if you're ramping up, so when people get injured is when they start increasing their mileage, and they decide, all right, I'm finally going to run that marathon, I'm going to run that half marathon, and they increase, and then there's little problems that they haven't quite been noticing, that's when they start emerging, and that's when it's start, time to start thinking about it. So, somebody with a question about that, yeah. um, I was wondering, do you Uh, there's lots of exercises that you can do. Um, I think going around the house barefoot is probably the best exercise. So just going barefoot and using those muscles, but certainly you can do things like towel curls where you put a towel on the ground and you, you know, use your flexors to try to grab the towel. Um, certainly doing um, heel raises up and down off the edge of the step and working the muscles of the posterior calf as well as the muscles of the arch. Uh, so, so anything that does those kinds of fit, addresses those kinds of muscles. But I think on barefoot is one of the best ways. Yes? Uh, on the topic of transitioning shoes, I, I know that there are fairly minimal shoes, like the Vibrams, and there are more transitional shoes. You know, if you wanted to start doing this, would you recommend going out and getting the Vibrams, or sort of you know, getting the Nike Freeze first, and then... You know, I, I, I actually think that the way to transition is some combination of barefoot plus some other shoe. There's no substitute for actually, truly barefoot or good barefoot. Because you don't, a shoe is a shoe. You're still blocking all that sensory nerve information. So even if you, even if you only wear the shoe for, even if you go barefoot for a few hundred meters, right? Just to kind of give yourself a body a little tune-up, right? Barefoot, just going barefoot into the shoe is a great, free, completely, you know, completely free coach uh, that will help you, help you with your form. And then, what kind of shoe to wear is, is, is such a matter of taste. I mean, I, what I look for in a minimal shoe is something that, that's flexible, right? So if the, if the sole of the foot, this is a new shoe that, that New Balance just produced. I'm not talking any shoes here today, but uh, this is a, a minimal shoe. It's very flexible, right? You can, it's not, it doesn't have a stiff sole. There's no arch support in it, and there's no heel. And there's no heel counter either. Yeah. So it's, it's right here. Yeah. So it's. There's not much. It's just basically a glove to protect your foot. And there's so many different versions out there, from the Nike 3 to the Merrill to the Vivo Five Fingers to the Evo. Uh, most racing flats, um, you know, what, 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 what elite runners wear. I mean, when they're, you know, best men and women out there are, are racing to, to, to be a world record or beat each other, they're not wearing shoes with a high heel. They're wearing shoes with almost no heel on them at all. Um, racing flats are also great minimal shoes. Almost every company makes racing flats. So there's a big variety of shoes out there. It's just too personal to, to advise you. I mean, I, I like, actually, I, I have about eight or nine different minimal <laughs> shoes that I'm all worn and, and do wear. I have a few that I like a bit more than others, but everybody's just different, and I would hesitate to give them advice. What about Newton's? Newton's is an interesting example. So a lot of people love Newton's. And Newton is actually a, a modern running shoe with a stiff heel. Some, it's a stiff sole, but what they've done is they've added little plugs, essentially, underneath the metatarsal heads to try to force you to a forefoot strike. And Newtons do force you to a forefoot strike. And you do, when you run in Newtons, you don't have those, those, those um, you know, the impact transient that you get from a, from a forefoot strike. But it's not a minimal shoe. So it's a, it's a different solution. It's not a less is more shoe. It's a, 
it's like more in a different way shoe. And there are a lot of people who love them. I don't like them, but there are a lot of people who do. And if you like them, where are, are your new things? I mean, everybody's different. I don't, whatever works, right? Uh, it's, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable with sort of, you know, I have lots of people, friends who wear their new things and love them. But there are great. people who actually go out and buy water shoes, you know, the beach shoes? Yeah, yeah. And they run in those. I mean, because those shoes cost about $100. I mean, the minimal footwear industry is making a lot of money, obviously. <laughs> I mean, you look at what those things are made of. It's mesh and a little bit of rubber on the bottom of it, right? But so I know people that just go out and buy $20 pair of water shoes and they run in those. I know uh, barefoot runners who uh, just simply put duct tape around their socks. <laughs> there you go. Or fashioned hirachis. Oh, actually, this, actually, hirachis are great. You can yeah. now buy them online as a pair, and they're fantastic. <laughs> um, you can buy, like, this is that Taramara wear. There's a you know, this guy, actually, Barefoot Ted. Remember Barefoot Ted from the book? Barefoot Ted now owns a company called Luna Sandals. And uh, if you want to buy Barefoot Ted sandals, you'll get the Barefoot Ted experience as well. Uh, if you didn't be drinking his urine while he's making it. Uh, but uh, I have a pair of his sandals, and they're terrific. Actually. So there's a lot of options out there. Yeah. For those of us in the room that you got really excited, you know, to go out and try this, and that are training for, let's say, the Boston Marathon 45 days or so from now. Wait. Yeah. That's what we're running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now so is not the time to transition. Yeah, no. So non-training is yes. yeah, the ideal later. time. Anybody else want to go on the treadmill? You're all welcome. There are two treadmills. Now try heel straight. All right, now go back to the purpose. You have to work on, but you've got a nice baby. Nice vertical posture, but you're thinking about it. Nice and relaxed. Oh, you know, Jumps under the treadmill. Yeah, I do that all the time. Oh, that's kind of bad. Now that you have a way too slow pace. Thank you. 